return at Interactive uh, Brokers. Long ago and far away, after Robert Solo's 1957 paper on technology, on human capital, on growth, there was a magazine, MIT Technology Review. Um, it, Mike, it was it was beaten into me at the dining room table. You colored, Articles colored in the edges. I colored on the edges, and my father said, "Shut up and read this magazine." It is now, of course, out on the internet on the web, technologyreview.com. Brian Bergstein joins us, deputy editor, MIT Technology Review. Brian, what are you doing? Is the old line gospel of technology given a web in a digital world? What is new at your magazine? So we focus on probably much the same kind of things that you were reading about back at the dining room table. We're looking at what are the big problems in the world that technology can solve. There are all sorts of hot buttons. I remember, Mike, remember nanotechnology? That was three fads ago. What's the, that was a small thing. Yeah. What's the fad right now that drives you nuts? I mean, when you talk to the sophisticates, whether it's at Caltech or MIT, wherever, what's the in thing where you go, ah, eh, maybe not? Uh, this is not an opinion that's necessarily shared by my colleagues, but personally, uh, Google Glass drives me crazy. Thank you. Oh, this guy, he can stay on for three hours. Let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be useful in certain applications. You know, we actually have a story today on technologyreview.com about doctors in an emergency room in a Boston hospital. They're using it for very sort of specific purposes. But as a mainstream everyday advi uh, device, no, I don't see it. I don't want well, it. Well, what about, what about, if not Google Glass, Oculus Rift, and the virtual reality goggle? Yeah, so that's really interesting. And that is one of our uh, 10 breakthrough technologies. So our new issue that hits newsstands this week, and uh, you can come see it at technologyreview.com. We nice actually plug. put, we put, yeah, we put <laughs> Oculus Rift in the uh, 10 breakthrough technologies of the year, where we identify the milestones from the past year that are really going to stick and really matter. And the yeah, reason I, why, I, yeah. Well, no, saying, no, continue, continue, please. Yeah, well, the reason why is that obviously virtual reality itself isn't new. It came about in the 90s and kind of faded out. It was too expensive. It wasn't very good. Right. But now the technology is good enough and cheap enough that all kinds of new applications are going to emerge, not only in gaming, but in entertainment. You can see movies yeah. or immersive experiences. It, we, we actually think this time it's going to be really big. I mean, I mean, you've got the usual, you know, robots thing, blah, 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 drones thing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you go is one of your things, which the I find usual. interesting. No, no. But I mean, everybody, <laughs> come on, it's blondes and robots. You know that, Mike. But the thing that I oh, notice yeah. is now your phone's tilt sensor can identify you. What is that about? Yeah, what's amazing is we're not probably aware of all the ways you can be tracked. And there's... For every new application that seems to mask release of data about you or steps you take to, uh, you know, not want to be followed by advertisers or whatever, just about every piece of hardware has a unique fingerprint. And, you know, just like there's always a new biometric, someone can identify you by your, not just your fingerprints, or your eye prints, but even the way you walk. Well, your devices turn out to leave a, a, a particular uh, fingerprint. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and, and the, the, the way you move about your day is, is somehow unique to you. Well, um, if, that, if, if, if these things, let me ask you this. What is out there that based on that that's going to change our lives that we don't know about yet? Well, one of the things on our list that is intriguing on this subject is uh, ultra-private phones. So there's a new kind of... Uh, you know, mass market friendly phone that by default shuts off all kinds of tracking uh, beacons. So unless you're in an area where you frequently are, like your office or your home, um, your phone's Wi-Fi beacon won't uh, randomly ping um, Wi-Fi beacons out in public. And so, you know, now if you walk into a, a shopping center stores are trying to follow you around the, you know, around the store to try to send right. deals your way or whatever. You may not want that. You may not want your, your location tracked. You may not want, mm -hmm. uh, you may want your data like encrypted. So phones are going to start coming, some phones for people who care about this are going to come with encryption and, and uh, tracking turned off. Encryption turned on and tracking turned off by default. It's hilarious. This is like uh, caller ID. 
I mean, we invented caller ID so that we could, uh, I mean, in theory, so that we would all be happy to know who was calling us, and then they had to invent technology that blocked caller ID. And, and we all had to pay for that. And there's technology that uh, spoofs caller ID, so the arms race is just continually <laughs> going on. It, it, it's crazy. Uh, the biggest, uh, in my mind, um, one of the biggest, because there's so many areas of science, but one of the biggest in, the things that will affect the economy in years to come is the, this idea of 3D printing. There's all kinds of um, threads you can pull on there about what it might mean, everything from um, the elimination of the factory job to uh, the fact that anybody, any terrorist anywhere could print themselves a plastic gun. Uh, narrow it down for us. Tell us what the, the real potential is here and how soon we will realize it. So 3D printing in the home, it's going to be a long time before it moves beyond hobbyists kind of things. I talked to someone recently who actually has a 3D printer. I said, what do you really do with it? And he said, nothing, Thank you. nothing much. I mean, yeah. you're limited to plastic as your feedstock and as your material, and you can make little trinkets. You can make your own iPhone case, but you probably don't need to make that many iPhone cases. Um, the real value is going to be in some kinds of manufacturing um, processes. In fact, you're already seeing that. GE makes um, some parts through this additive right. manufacturing process. Um, in our latest issue of the magazine, we're looking at a much smaller scale. There's some fascinating research being done in a lab at Harvard and uh, also in Princeton where uh, researchers are, are doing 3D printing at essentially a microscopic scale. So you can imagine building. You can, you, they're trying to build with a whole new range of materials, not just plastic. Mm -hmm. So what you can imagine coming there is... Oh electronics embedded in a device, so you make it all at once. Right. I, I want to go back to MIT Technology Review. It's 115 years old. You get 54 people. And I love what you say, Brian, about uh, the digital prism filtering, rather, the overwhelming flood of information. All of us, we deal with this at Bloomberg Surveillance every single day. Citigroup has this great phase, digital exhaustion. How do you see our listeners worldwide dealing with the ever-growing feed of digital stuff. Where are we going? Oh, that's a great question. I'm not sure I have the answer, but I do think that what we try to do is stop and say, listen, there's all kinds of noise, whether it's about tech stocks or startups, that's just really kind of clutter. And to ask yourself the question we ask, which is, okay, what technologies truly solve problems they don't necessarily solve big problems. Maybe they at least reduce friction in the world. They create new opportunities. And when you ask those questions, a lot of things tend to fall by the wayside. You know, there's so much over coverage of Silicon Valley, you can filter most of that out. Brilliant. Are they going to have robot radio hosts? Yeah, robot radio hosts. Brian Bergstein, thank you so much. Technology Review, MIT Technology thank you. Review. Thank you. Not only um, interesting as a website, some of the stuff that's been uh, going on, but far, far more. Mike, I can't convey the history of the RAG. I mean, it was just such an important magazine for jump-starting what technology was done. I love what he said there, pushing back on, uh, you know, the sappy enthusiasm of some uh, of this stuff. Something that covers technology has to reinvent itself so people will read it in this age yeah. of technology. Yeah. Speaking of never being reinvented, the Hayes Advantage yeah. has a certain glow, a certain allure Ooh. that is incalculable. Janet Yellen speaking tomorrow. I know. Boy, oh boy. It's, it, and every time she talks now, we know we're all...